closed at Callaway Road due to issues with a drainage pipe and crews will be out there all day long repairing that road. They say the work could last until six o'clock tonight. It's going to be a traffic nightmare over there. So drivers encouraged to use Powder Springs Road as an alternate in the meantime. All right, let's get a check of your forecast with Chesley McNeil. Chesley, I wanted to say weekend forecast. My brain's already there. <laughs> I'm right with you. I'm right with you, but not much change in our forecast. We're going to see pretty much the same thing we have been seeing. Hot and humid conditions. Also scattered thunderstorms once we get to the afternoon. Right now, this live shot near the Noonan area. In fact, they started a school here in Noonan today. Uh, clouds starting to form. You see the cumulus clouds starting to bubble up there. Still plenty of blue sky, though. So you're looking at partly sunny skies for this afternoon, but we'll also start to see some of those isolated showers begin to develop. Up. Should start right around the noon hour. That's the way it's been almost like clockwork for us. We don't have anything out there right now, and it has been dry so far this morning, which is a good sign for us, but it's just helping to heat us right on up. Temperatures in the 80s where we started out in the 60s in some spots. You're in the 70s right now. Gainesville here at 79 degrees, 79 right there on the doorstep of 80 degrees in Marietta and Atlanta. You're looking at 83 degrees down in Peachtree City, 82 in Thomaston, 80 over toward Carrollton at the current tower. Going to heat up into the low 90s for highs today. Yep, hopefully pack that umbrella with you today. Uh, you'll be reaching out to see if there's any rain because at times those clouds look really dark over your area. 30% chance for those scattered showers and thunderstorms. Again, 91 degrees will be the high temperature, but when you factor in the humidity, it's going to feel hotter than that. So hopefully you got your short sleeves and your shorts on to keep you on the cool side. Hey, we got an update from Noah on the hurricane season. I'm going to tell you about that in the full forecast coming up. All right, Chesley, thank you. Happening today, a mother continues her push to have a local police officer fired as he awaits a murder trial for shooting and killing her son. Monteria Robinson is expected to hold a news conference today. Her son, Jamarian Robinson, was shot nearly 60 times by Clayton County Police back in 2016. Years later, Christopher Hutchins remains on the force as a training officer. Investigators say Robinson was armed with a gun, so that's why officers opened fire on him. Jamarian's family say he was struggling from mental illness at the time. The murder trial for Hutchins and another now former officer is expected to begin next month. Right now, a growing number of people in the metro are trying to get their hands on that monkeypox vaccine, but it is still pretty tough. Just this morning, 240 appointment slots in DeKalb County filled up in just 15 minutes. The Georgia Department of Public Health tells us testing and vaccines are available in every health district throughout the state. They also say more vaccines are coming with another 5,600 doses ordered just this week. However, we've heard from some of you who say the appointment are really hard to come by with those slots filling up so fast. Basically, you have to kind of keep an eye on the Twitter page to see when they have openings. Man, that's tough. And with 240 more appointments already filled, DeKalb County tells us it does have more vaccines on the way. So if you couldn't lock down a vaccine today, they say to keep checking the Board of Health's website and their social media for updates. You can head to 11alive.com as well for all the latest monkeypox data and vaccine information near you. We're also checking in on monkeypox vaccines for kids. We'll tell you what you need to know coming up in the next 10 minutes. All righty, kids, you know today is the day school back in session for seven more districts. Here's a look at which districts are kicking off the new school year today. Gwinnett County Schools welcoming back the rest of their students today. They did a staggered start dates for different grade levels, but everyone's officially in. Georgia's sixth largest school district, Forsyth County Schools, also back in class, and Fayette County's 19,000 students also making their return. Well, we have told you safety is a top priority for schools this year, and now that students are headed back to the classroom, many of you wanted to know how local police are training for that worst case scenario. I reached out to more than a dozen police departments across our area, and most are training for active shooters at a level I've never seen before. Shoot it down the hallway, down that way. The video and photos you'll see in this story are all simulations. That doesn't mean it's easy to watch. It is very close to home. Um, it's heartbreaking, but that's why we train. I reached out to 16 police departments across Metro Atlanta. Six gave detailed responses about how they're training for a school shooting. In Cobb County, our tactical guys will actually play bad guys and role players, and we bring in civilians to play civilian victims. Police Sergeant Wayne Delk says their training is more realistic than it's ever been. It has 
has definitely evolved. The understanding is that the stakes are a lot higher. In Sandy Springs, the training is similarly realistic. We have to be ready to respond to something that nobody wants to respond to. And the only way to do that is by putting ourselves in that type of environment. All use guns that shoot projectiles or send shock waves. Watch as this Atlanta Public Schools officer acting as an active shooter hides in the classroom and takes down an officer from behind. When you get struck by these, it hurts. Winnet police just finished training at a local elementary school, adding to the mix actors playing students and teachers. Role player students running through the halls, screaming and yelling. Students in the room, it's realistic as it can be. Another significant change most of the departments who responded say they no longer train to wait for backup. They train to respond. It is trained into them. Even if, unfortunately, you're by yourself, you're going to go into the school. I can't wait 30 seconds. At that moment, we have to do that job. Lives are depending on it. Now, another thing several departments said is they closely study the layout of schools, like little known entry and exit points. They don't release the details of that to the public because they want to keep the upper hand on anyone who has bad intentions. We do have a breakdown of each county's response plan on 11alive.com. Well, with monkeypox spreading in the Peach State, we are asking questions about how you can protect yourself and your kids. The latest from the CDC on vaccines and what options parents have for protection. That's next. Is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County, where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a. And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m., where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that... Welcome back and continuing our coverage now on the nation's monkeypox outbreak. We've talked about the low supply of vaccines for adults, but what about for kids? Casey Decker with our Verify team is looking into whether your kids can and should get the shot. More than 5,000 people in the United States have gotten monkeypox, but almost none of them have been children. There are vaccines, but as viral posts have pointed out, health departments are severely limiting who they'll give them out to. And while there is no evidence yet to suggest the current outbreak in the U.S. is more severe in children, some other posts say that has historically been the case with past outbreaks of the disease. 
So with the first American cases in kids confirmed in recent weeks and the school year on the way, some parents are wondering if there are protective measures they can take. So let's verify. Are children eligible for the monkeypox vaccine? Our sources, the CDC, several major city and state health departments, and Allison Messina, the chief of the Infectious Diseases Division at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. There are currently two monkeypox vaccines available in the U.S., but there isn't a lot of supply of either, and so local health departments are only giving it to those most at risk. Right now, that means men who have sex with men since they make up the bulk of cases so far. And even within that group, it can be difficult to get the shot as a preventative measure. With few exceptions, health departments are only giving it to people who have been directly exposed to the virus. But if you have been exposed, no matter who you are, you could be eligible for the shot, and that includes children. The CDC told Verify, quote, children and adolescents with exposure to people with suspected or confirmed monkeypox may be eligible for post-exposure vaccination. Dr. Allison Messina says the current eligibility requirements make sense given that the disease is so far spreading mostly within specific adult groups. Right now, there's not a big push to provide routine vaccinations for monkeypox for children. Now that may change if it continues to spread. So we can verify no, children are not currently eligible for the monkeypox vaccine unless they have been directly exposed to the virus. And right now, one of the two vaccines is FDA approved only for adults. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Happening today, it marks one year since this massive fire damaged a bridge in the middle of Cheshire Bridge Road. The fire eventually led to the bridge's demolition. And now we have an update on construction and when it's expected to be finished. Let's take a look at what the area looks like now. Yep, if you live over there, you've seen this. Still no structure over Peachtree Creek that connects one end of Cheshire Bridge to the other. Drivers have been taking detours to get to work and home ever since, and businesses we've talked to have struggled from the lack of traffic. Some have even had to close. Atlanta DOT says construction right now is on schedule. They are set to be finished by the end of October. All right, we've got plenty of blue sky on the outside. This is up in the Joe Jerome area. You can see a slight breeze as well as the flags kind of blow around. It's almost looks like a painting back here where you draw those nice little cumulus clouds. That's what's forming just about everywhere in our forecast area this afternoon, but it's dry. And yeah, we don't have the showers like we had yesterday about this time fading up to the north. We'll see some showers developing once we hit further into the afternoon. I'm thinking just afternoon, we'll start to see those isolated showers around the area. It could be a few isolated thunderstorms embedded in a few of those as well. Same pattern that we've been stuck in for the last few days that continues at least for today and temperatures are in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees just about everywhere you look in fact let's take a look uh, at a few of these temperatures upper 70s for places like Conyers over toward Covington 79 degrees and McDonough and down in Locust Grove in southern Henry County 84 degrees over into Noonan you're at 79 and Fayetteville welcome back to school to you 78 degrees Powder Strings 80 in Hiram and Paulding County you're looking at 79 degrees Marietta also 79 in Mapleton 80 in Tucker in DeKalb County, you're at 79 degrees downtown, 81 down in East Point. And so uh, warming up this afternoon, especially with the sunshine around. In fact, I think it's going to really heat up on us with temperatures in the low 90s. Once again, we were there yesterday. I think we'll get right back there again this afternoon and again with a few of those thunderstorms because we have had a 30% chance. We'll give today's number on the wisometer a seven out of a possible 11. It's how we rate your weather on a scale from one to 11. 11 would be a perfect day. If we had temperatures, let's say about 83. Low humidity, yeah, for this time of year anyway, our average is 90, so we're, we'll be right around average. Notice these thunderstorms up here to the north fading away as they head further down to the south. Not going to make it over toward where we are. Again, we get the diurnal uh, thunderstorms that pop up with the daytime heating, so how, not a whole lot of activity over us. In fact, we're not expecting much in the way of any severe weather at all. Uh, just a few thunderstorms out there. So with the same pattern in place, let's take a look. In the tropics, with nothing much going on, NOAA has updated its forecast, the mid-season forecast, and really still predicting an above-average season, even though there's not much going on right now. And a lot of that hindered by this dust that's coming off the Sahara. Uh, you can see where that dust is stretching all the way across the Atlantic into Florida. Uh, some of that could be making its way up toward us as well. It gives you those beautiful sunset pictures, those colors in the sky, but also hinders the development of hurricanes or any tropical systems. So here's their latest update. 
38, and it's slightly lower than what they predicted, but still above average as far as the season. Here's the average in the first column there. You're taking a look at what we saw last season, and we're just about there as far as the prediction goes. And so expecting an uptick as we get closer and closer to peak day for hurricane season, which is actually September 10th. So as we get into August, especially by mid-August, you start to notice an uptick in those tropical systems developing. So far, we've had three name storms, none of which were hurricanes, but we'll start to see that pick up uh, again once we get to mid and late August heading into September. Until then, let's continue to enjoy the heat for some of you who like that heat and humidity, along with those scattered showers that pop up with a few embedded thunderstorms. It's the way it's going to be as we head into the day. Uh, rest of the afternoon. Tomorrow is pretty much the same, partly to mostly cloudy skies to start the day and the afternoon. Some scattered showers will pop up a few embedded thunderstorms on Friday. I'm giving it a little bit lower of a chance, which is why it's my pick for the week. Either way, the threat is there and will be there as we head through the weekend as well. We're going to pretty much the same Saturday 91 for your high temperature, 30% chance of the rain Sunday 90 with a 30% chance of the rain, mainly during the afternoons, both days, and we'll continue that as we head into the work week. Savannah. All right, I'll take some seven and eights after the two and threes and fours we've seen. All right, still to come, there are more eyes on the roads, making sure your child is safe getting to and from school. How these cameras will help crack down on speeders in school zones. That's next. Mobile Weather Center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And Right now, officers in the metro are working to make sure your student is safe as they head to and from school. Take a look at this. This picture is from police showing a driver going nearly 100 miles per hour through a school zone. They got it from one of many cameras now watching the roads around local schools. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes has been following efforts to better protect school zones. Police tell him the new cameras mean those who speed will pay. 
Speed past Church Street Elementary School here in Riverdale, and police will know even if there's not an officer here. The sign says it all. Cameras are watching. Riverdale police say too often drivers refuse to slow down when school's in session. Sometimes flashing lights along with the frantic arm motions of a Clayton County police officer aren't enough. As she walks her niece to Swint Elementary School, Haley Rounds is comforted to know that as this officer attempts to calm traffic on Highway 138, there's also an electronic eye watching. They move so quickly in between traffic. I think a lot of people, they don't take it seriously until it's their child. Cameras armed with speed detection are now posted outside several schools around Clayton County. They're in Gwinnett County as well, where they've captured photos like this of vehicles traveling as fast as 92 miles an hour through a school zone. The cities of Lawrenceville, Jonesboro, and Riverdale are among the areas where cameras started operating this school year for the purpose of issuing tickets. Riverdale Police Sergeant Victor Ortega says during a trial period here, drivers started getting the message. It should be 25, and we still see violators doing 45, 50 miles an hour on the school zones, which is really is unnecessary. Everybody gets caught about the money. It's not about the money. It's about getting compliance. Fines vary from one area to another and by law are only for drivers going more than 10 miles an hour over the posted speed limit during school hours. Gwinnett County certainly hasn't had an issue catching violators. In one year, with cameras outside three schools, Gwinnett Police issued more than 25,000 citations. Haley Rounds is ready to see even more cameras around schools in Clayton County. This is a lot of traffic first thing in the morning. She says she can use all the help she can get to navigate busy Highway 138 with a first grader in tow. You saw the picture last year. A camera caught a driver going 92 miles an hour through a school zone in Gwinnett County. It happened again on the first day of school, 92 in a school zone. Man, that is just crazy. And it's not just local police departments getting behind this effort. Today, the governor's office of highway safety is kicking off its own safety campaign. Now, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, students are 70 times more likely to arrive at school safely when they ride the bus. Still, one survey shows drivers illegally pass buses more than a million times a year on average. The school's open drive carefully campaign aims to make sure that other drivers know the rules of the road to better protect your kids. Time to remind you now how you can support 11 Alive and help us help local students this school year. You can donate to Fulton County Schools through our back to school drive. Just text the word supplies to the number right here on your screen. We'll send you a link to an Amazon wish list for the different schools and all donations will be shipped directly to those schools. Still ahead, Music Midtown is canceled in Atlanta. You probably heard about that by now, but we are hearing from many of you that you still haven't seen your money back. New details on where to get your refund next. Center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. 
is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be. Welcome back. We know your money is important, so we want to get more answers about Music Midtown now that it's canceled, and we have new details about your refund. So we reached out to Front Gate Tickets. That's the company that should be refunding your money. And customer service agents tell us the refund should have been sent automatically after the event was canceled. Now, if your card has expired or you have gotten a new card since then, the refund might take a little longer. Agents say that process usually takes within seven to 10 business days. However, we know some other issues might come up and if that's the case and you don't see a refund, customer service reps suggest reaching out to your bank directly and then the bank should send the money back to Frontgate who will then send you your refund by mail. Refunds through the mail are a bit of a longer process, could take more than a month to go through. If you need the number for customer service, it is right here on your screen. If you missed it, if you didn't write it down on time, don't worry, we have it posted on 11alive.com. 11 Live News at noon starts now. We start with breaking news just into our newsroom in the last 30 minutes. A Russian judge just sentenced WNBA star Brittany Griner to nine years in prison on drug charges. It's been six months since Griner was arrested at a Moscow airport accused of trying to smuggle cannabis oil in her luggage. Today, before the verdict was handed down, Griner made an emotional plea. She maintained she had no intention of breaking the law. She also apologized to her teammates fans and family for quote the embarrassment she's brought on them now she's called her actions an honest mistake adding that she hopes the ruling doesn't end her life again a judge just sentencing Griner to nine years in prison the maximum sentence she could have gotten was 10 years and we have more breaking news from Kentucky. Four current and former Louisville police officers are facing federal charges for the deadly raid on Breonna Taylor's home in 2020. Three of those officers are accused of submitting a false affidavit to Taylor's home to search Taylor's home and then creating a false cover story. These are the first federal level charges brought against any of the officers involved in that botched raid. One of the officers faced state level charges but was acquitted on all three in March. Developing now in South Atlanta, police are searching for the person accused of firing dozens of rounds into a home overnight, leaving a 19 year old shot in the leg. This was the scene early this morning at the home on Maury Avenue, just a minute down the road from Luther J. Price Middle School. Officers tell us the teen was in the house just sleeping at the time of the shooting. They're asking anyone with information to give them a call. Also developing right now, a two-year-old remains in the hospital fighting for his life after police say someone fired shots into his father's car outside a barber shop. Right now, no one is in custody. This happened around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon on Peter Street in southwest Atlanta. Police tell us they do believe the shooting was targeted. The father of the toddler telling officers he noticed a blue Kia Optima following him before the shots were fired. The car pulled alongside on the passenger side and began to open fire, uh, striking the two-year-old who was in the back seat. The toddler who was hit by that bullet is in critical condition. If you have any information on that blue Kia Optima or know who might have done this, please call Atlanta PD.
And we have a traffic alert for you now for drivers in Cobb County. This is a live look from our chopper at a major sinkhole causing problems on Austell Road. As you can see right now, northbound lanes completely closed at Callaway Road due to issues we're told with a drainage pipe. Crews will be out there repairing this all day long. At least they say the work could last until six o'clock tonight. Drivers are encouraged to use Powder Springs Road as an alternate in the meantime. All right, let's get a check of your forecast with Chesley McNeil. Chesley, what do we have? It looks like blue skies behind you. We do have some blue sky out there. You got those cumulus clouds in the background. You see that at times they're going to get a little thick where it starts to get a little dark and you can see over toward the Blue Rays area right now. There's a cloud. <laughs> so we can't see the sun at least ricocheting off some of these buildings here, but uh, mix of sun and clouds will be the call for the rest of the afternoon where some of those showers will start to develop as well. We've been waiting for that to take place. Typically after about noon, right around one, two o'clock, we start to see that with a few embedded thunderstorms forming as well. So that will be the case as we head into the afternoon. A lot of us won't see it at all because it's only a 30% chance, but today could be your day. Temperatures are in the 80s. Finally, after some spots started out in the 60s this morning, we're right at 80 in Duluth up towards Gainesville, 83 degrees right now in Atlanta, 81 in Athens, 85. The warm spot, Peachtree City. Yeah, so hopefully you carry the umbrella with you. You have to be on the lookout for a few of those showers. When we get some of those emitted thunderstorms, there'll be some brief heavy rain, some frequent lightning could be associated with it, and some gusty winds as well. 91 degrees will be our afternoon high temperature for today. Of course, factoring the humidity makes it feel much hotter than that. So short sleeves, shorts if you're going out this afternoon. Make sure you stay nice and comfortable, hydrated, and dry. <laughs> we'll talk more about uh, your forecast for the uh, weekend coming up, plus a look at the hurricane season an adjustment made. We'll talk about that in the full forecast straight ahead. Happening today, a mother continues her push to have a local police officer fired as he awaits a murder trial for shooting and killing her son. Monteria Robinson is expected to hold a news conference today. Her son, Jamarian Robinson, was shot nearly 60 times by Clayton County Police back in 2016. Years later, Christopher Hutchins remains on the force as a training officer. Investigators say Robinson was armed with a gun. That's why officers opened fire on him. Jamarian's family say he was suffering from mental illness at the time. The murder trial for Hutchins and another now former officer is expected to begin next month. Right now, a growing number of people in the metro are trying to get the monkeypox vaccine, but having a pretty tough time. Just in the last few hours, 240 new appointment slots in DeKalb opened up and then filled up in 15 minutes. The Georgia Department of Public Health tells us that testing and vaccines are available in every health district throughout the state. They also say more vaccines are coming, so that's good news. They have another 5,600 doses they ordered just this week. However, we have heard from some of you who say the appointments are still really hard to come by with those slots filling up so fast. Basically, you have to kind of keep an eye on the Twitter page to see when they have openings. And with 240 more appointments already filled, as we told you, DeKalb County says that it does have more vaccines on the way. So if you could not lock one down today, they say keep checking the Board of Health's website and their social media pages. You can also head to 11alive.com for all the latest monkeypox data and vaccine information near you. We're also checking in on monkeypox vaccines for kids. That's coming up in the next 10 minutes. All right, today is the day school is back in session for seven more districts. Here's a look at which districts are kicking off this new school year. Gwinnett County Schools welcoming the rest of their students back today. They did a staggered start dates for different grade levels, but they're all back now in the classroom. Georgia's sixth largest school district, Forsyth County Schools, also back in class today. Fayette County's 19,000 students also making their return. Hope everyone has a great first day of school. And we have told you that safety is a top priority for schools this year and for so many parents. And now that students are headed back to the classroom, many of you wanted to know how local police are training for a school shooting, that worst case scenario. I reached out to more than a dozen police departments across our area, and frankly, most are training at a level I've never seen before. Shooting down the hallway, down that way. The video and photos you'll see in this story are all simulations. That doesn't mean it's easy to watch. It is very close to home. Um, it's heartbreaking, but that's why we train. I reached out to 16 police departments across Metro Atlanta. Six gave detailed responses about how they're training for a school shooting. In Cobb County, our tactical guys will actually play bad guys and role players, and we bring in civilians to play civilian victims. Police Sergeant Wayne Delk says their training is more realistic than it's ever been. It 
it has definitely evolved. The understanding is that the stakes are a lot higher. In Sandy Springs, the training is similarly realistic. We have to be ready to respond to something that nobody wants to respond to. And the only way to do that is by putting ourselves in that type of environment. All use guns that shoot projectiles or send shock waves. Watch as this Atlanta Public Schools officer acting as an active shooter hides in the classroom and takes down an officer from behind. When you get struck by these, it hurts. Winnette Police just finished training at a local elementary school, adding to the mix actors playing students and teachers. Role player students running through the halls, screaming and yelling, students in the room. It's realistic as it can be. Another significant change most of the departments who responded say they no longer train to wait for backup. They train to respond. It is trained into them. Even if, unfortunately, you're by yourself, you're going to go into the school. I can't wait 30 seconds. At that moment, we have to do that job. Lives are depending on it. Another thing several departments said is they closely study the layout of schools, like little known entry and exit points. They don't release details of that to the public because they want to keep the upper hand on anyone with bad intentions. We have a breakdown of each county's response plan on 11alive.com. Well, with monkeypox spreading in the Peach State, we're asking questions about how to protect yourself and your kids. The latest from the CDC on vaccines and what options parents have for protection. That's next. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive. Welcome back. Continuing our coverage now on the nation's monkeypox outbreak. We've talked about the low supply of vaccines for adults, but what about for kids? Casey Decker with our Verify team is looking into whether your kids can and should get the shot. More than 5,000 people in the United States have gotten monkeypox, but almost none of them have been children. There are vaccines, but as viral posts have pointed out, health departments are severely limiting who they'll give them out to. And while there is no evidence yet to suggest the current outbreak in the U.S. is more severe in children, some other posts say that has historically been the case with past outbreaks of the disease. So with the first American cases in kids confirmed in recent weeks and the school year on the way, some parents are wondering if there are 
are protective measures they can take. So let's verify. Are children eligible for the monkeypox vaccine? Our sources, the CDC, several major city and state health departments, and Allison Messina, the chief of the Infectious Diseases Division at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. There are currently two monkeypox vaccines available in the U.S., but there isn't a lot of supply of either, and so local health departments are only giving it to those most at risk. Right now, that means men who have sex with men since they make up the bulk of cases so far. And even within that group, it can be difficult to get the shot as a preventative measure. With few exceptions, health departments are only giving it to people who have been directly exposed to the virus. But if you have been exposed, no matter who you are, you could be eligible for the shot, and that includes children. The CDC told Verify, quote, children and adolescents with exposure to people with suspected or confirmed monkeypox may be eligible for post-exposure vaccination. Dr. Allison Messina says the current eligibility requirements make sense, given that the disease is so far spreading mostly within specific adult groups. Right now, there's not a big push to provide routine vaccinations for monkeypox for children. Now that may change if it continues to spread. So we can verify no, children are not currently eligible for the monkeypox vaccine unless they have been directly exposed to the virus. And right now, one of the two vaccines is FDA approved only for adults. With your verify, I'm Casey Decker. Well, today marks one year since this massive fire damaged a bridge in the middle of Cheshire Bridge Road. The fire eventually led to the bridge's demolition. And now we have an update on construction and when it's expected to be finished. If you drive by, you know this is what that area looks like now. Still no structure over Peachtree Creek connecting one end of Cheshire Bridge to the other. Drivers have been taking detours to get to work and home ever since. And businesses we've talked to have struggled from the lack of traffic. Some have even had to close. Atlanta DOT says construction right now is on schedule. They are set to be finished by the end of October. Well, well, well. Got some sunshine out there, folks, along with a few clouds. We'll call it a mix of sun and clouds for the rest of the afternoon. This is, uh, well, we call, we call it clover leaf. We are I-285 meets up with 75 over by Tourist Park. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? But it's getting warmer out there. Temperature started out in the 60s in some spots, already into the 80s for this afternoon, but a little bit drier than we were just yesterday. And of course, we'll take that, of course. You can see where we have some clouds starting to develop now. We'll get a few isolated showers or scattered showers involved in that as well. And then a few isolated thunderstorms could pop up as well. Temperatures again, as I said, in the 80s, except to the far north there. Got, uh, 79 degrees up into Rabin County right now 82 in McDonough down toward Locust Grove in southern parts of Henry County 77 over into Covington at the current hour as well. Let's head uh, over toward the west and see uh, if my map isn't stuck there. Looks like it wants to be stuck right there. It's all right, Andrew. I got my man Andrew running to help me out here. So we're looking at uh, temperatures mainly in the 80s for the most part. You're looking at 84 degrees right now in Noonan. Up into Dallas, you're at 81. 80 up into Ackworth. And we got 82 degrees right now in Tucker. On the Wazometer, we've got a 7 out of a possible 11. 91 degrees will be your afternoon high temperature when you factor in the humidity. Of course, it's going to feel a lot warmer than that. So shorts, short sleeves. Hopefully you did that but also carry the umbrella with you if you're going out this afternoon because of that 30% chance for a scattered shower or thunderstorm. Now, where we have those thunderstorms begin to develop, of course, we could see some heavy rain associated with it, maybe some frequent lightning associated with it as well, with a few gusty winds. Not as widespread as what we're seeing back off to the west, even though that's starting to die out. High pressure is just too strong over us, and so we'll get the isolated variety. And that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it has been, and that's the way it's going to be for the foreseeable future, right on through our weekend and into the beginning of next week. So with that pattern continuing, you know what to expect. We jump out over the pond, shall we? Check out the tropics. Really nothing much going on out here at all. Even into the Gulf looks pretty calm for now. Got a th couple of thunderstorms there developing, but pretty calm. We're not anticipating any tropical weather to develop over the next at least five days, right? Partly due to this dust that you see here, or the sand coming off the Sahara, uh, moving into the Atlantic, well across the Atlantic, all the way into uh, parts of Florida. Some of that could be seen even over our area at times with those beautiful sunsets that we'll see. Noah updated their mid-season hurricane outlook. 
brought it down slightly, but still predicting an above average season. You can see last year we had up to 21 name storms, saying anywhere between 14, which is average, and 20. Uh, and so we'll continue to watch that. So far we've had three name storms, none of which have been hurricanes, but we'll start to see an uptick here probably by the time we get to mid-August toward the end of August, getting closer and closer to the peak day of hurricane season, which is September 10th. We'll keep you updated on it, but until then, enjoy the heat and also enjoy the scattered showers that we'll have out there. Again, a few embedded thunderstorms certainly possible, and this is going to be a repeat performance as we head into the day tomorrow. We got it for you on Saturday, Sunday as well. So through your weekend, if you got plans to be outside, well, a better chance to see those thunderstorms during the afternoon. It's only a 30% chance, but a better outlook for the mornings in the early afternoon. Temperatures will remain right near 90 degrees through the weekend and into early next week. Savannah, back over to you. Thanks, Chesley. It definitely doesn't feel like it, but it's actually almost fall. And if you've already started shopping for those cooler temps, you might have noticed a lack of autumn looks in stores. NBC News senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn joins us with tips on how to find what you want and button up the best deals. From the spooky to the merry, retailers seem to stock their shelves with seasonal items earlier each year. But when it comes to clothes, some shoppers looking for fall fashion may feel left out in the cold. My 16 year old daughter went to the mall the other day and all she saw were summer clothes, uh, deeply, deeply discounted summer clothes. And she was kind of wondering where the fall clothes were. The merchandise once stuck on cargo ships during the supply chain crisis, eventually leaving retailers across the country with a boatload of inventory. That summer surplus still sitting in stores as consumers spend less on clothing amid decades high inflation. While many retailers have slashed their prices, others have sold their overstock to discount stores like Burlington, Ross and the TJ Maxx family of brands. It doesn't make sense for a general retailer to have very deep discounting going on for too long because essentially what that does is it trains the consumer to expect that kind of discounting. Experts say take advantage of the discounts on summer items you can easily transition into your fall wardrobe, like tanks and tees for layering when sweater weather arrives. If you can't find what your kids need for back to school, try shopping their closets first to see what still fits. And if new gear does make the list, start small. This idea that every season you have to buy something new head to toe. But pick one or two pieces, invest in those pieces, go online, research where you can find the best value. Parents can also shop secondhand for clothing, shoes, even backpacks at a fraction of retail, including back to school basics like denim. Stores like Plato's Closet, Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads source the majority of their inventories from the local community. So they remain largely unaffected by supply chain issues. Online thrift stores like ThreadUp offering another option as we fall into a new season of savings. If the fall clothes come in late, we'll see some good discounting right out of the gate. Yeah, I'm still wearing things from 10 years ago, so can't relate to needing a whole new wardrobe. All right, fans of NBC's Days of Our Lives, listen up. It is getting a new home. The long-running daytime drama will be moving exclusively to NBC's streaming service, Peacock, starting September 12th. It has been on air on NBC since 1965. So now in its place will be an hour-long newscast called NBC News Daily. Still to come, there are more eyes on the roads making sure your child is safe getting to and from school. We'll tell you how these new cameras will help crack down on speeders in school zones next. Exposing injustice and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage in winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11, now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. 
If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin. Right now, officers in the Metro are working to make sure your student is safe as they head to and from school. Take a look. This photo is from police showing a driver going nearly 100 miles per hour through a school zone. I got it from one of the many cameras now watching the roads around local schools. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes has been following efforts to better protect school zones. Police tell him the new cameras mean those who speed will pay. Speed past Church Street Elementary School here in Riverdale, and police will know even if there's not an officer here. The sign says it all. Cameras are watching. Riverdale police say too often drivers refuse to slow down when school's in session. Sometimes flashing lights along with the frantic arm motions of a Clayton County police officer aren't enough. As she walks her niece to Swint Elementary School, Haley Rounds is comforted to know that as this officer attempts to calm traffic on Highway 138, there's also an electronic eye watching. They move so quickly in between traffic. I think a lot of people, they don't take it seriously until it's their child. Cameras armed with speed detection are now posted outside several schools around Clayton County. They're in Gwinnett County as well, where they've captured photos like this of vehicles traveling as fast as 92 miles an hour through a school zone. The cities of Lawrenceville, Jonesboro, and Riverdale are among the areas where cameras started operating this school year for the purpose of issuing tickets. Riverdale Police Sergeant Victor Ortega says during a trial period here, drivers started getting the message. It should be 25, and we still see violators doing 45, 50 miles an hour on the school zones, which is really is unnecessary. Everybody gets caught about the money. It's not about the money. It's about getting compliance. Fines vary from one area to another and by law are only for drivers going more than 10 miles an hour over the posted speed limit during school hours. Gwinnett County certainly hasn't had an issue catching violators. In one year, with cameras outside three schools, Gwinnett Police issued more than 25,000 citations. Haley Rounds is ready to see even more cameras around schools in Clayton County. This is a lot of traffic first thing in the morning. She says she can use all the help she can get to navigate busy Highway 138 with a first grader in tow. You saw the picture last year. A camera caught a driver going 92 miles an hour through a school zone in Gwinnett County. It happened again on the first day of school, 92 in a school zone. That is just crazy, and it's not just local police departments getting behind this effort. Today, the governor's office of highway safety is kicking off its own safety campaign. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, students are 70 times more likely to arrive at school safely when they ride the bus. Still, one survey shows drivers illegally pass buses more than a million times a year on average. The school's open drive carefully campaign aims to make sure other drivers know the rules of the road to better protect your kids. And now's a good time to remind you, you can help support 11 Alive, help local students this school year. You can donate to Fulton County Schools through our back to school drive. Just text the word supplies to the number right here on your screen. We'll send you a link to an Amazon wish list and all donations will be shipped directly to those schools. Still ahead, some Atlanta United fans will get in Mercedes-Benz this weekend without a ticket to the game. Hmm, we'll show you the new technology that's launching this weekend next. Morning news. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Live is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time, every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. 
is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. So there's a new way for you to get inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Those long lines could soon be a thing of the past as the stadium allows fans this weekend to use their face as their ticket. The Benz is experimenting with what it calls a frictionless entry pilot. Club level season ticket holders will get to try out this new technology first. Those who opt in will use a biometric fingerprint of their face to get into the stadium, meaning the machines will just scan their facial features. The pilot starts this weekend at Atlanta United's game on Saturday. Tests will then continue over the next five events at the stadium. I don't know half of me thinks that's pretty cool the other half is like oh i don't know kind of scary we're living in the future we're living in the future <laughs> thanks for watching 11 alive news here at noon have a great rest of your day stay safe out there the news continues on 11alive.com Want to verify if something is true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you 